Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, the show all about music production and technology and stuff. I am your host Rupert Brown and this week I'm going to answer a viewer submitted question. It comes from Lampton Worm and he wants to know how he can trigger an effects curve um, or any kind of curve with one with pressing one pad on the launch pad to have an automatic slope down. I'd have a little think about this but I've got the answer for you and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but also at the end of this video we are going to announce the lucky winner of the Loop Masters K KJ Saka um, drum sample pack. So that will be good news for one lucky chap or chapette. Uh, and I've also got one more little little tiny uh, giveaway at the end of this video as well, another little competition-y thing, so uh, stay tuned for that, but let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so here we have a blank Ableton Live set. We have an audio clip that has nothing loaded in, and uh, that, that's pretty much well it. So we're going to start out, this is going to be our uh, audio clip. I'm going to drag in a drum loop here. Uh, another one from the, the KJ Saka sample pack that someone will be winning in a few short moments. Okay, so that's kind of cool. We'll run with that. Now, uh, how are we going to get one pad to basically do a, run a whole envelope of some kind of effect? So we're going to, to do that, we're actually going to use dummy clips. So I'm going to push Command T to open up a, a new audio track. Push Command R to rename it because we get in the habit of uh, naming our tracks as we go, don't we? Um, now we're going to open up the little I/O input output section here. So what I want to do is uh, instead of the audio from the audio track going straight to the master bus, uh, we want to send it to the effects bus instead. This is the new effects bus that we've just created, and on the effects bus we want to monitor the incoming audio going in there. So uh, we drop our I/O back out again. And just uh, so I've got any old clip, I'm going to duplicate the uh, this drum loop clip and I'll bring it in here to the effects section. Uh, and I'm going to rename it Dummy. And cool. And so this is going to be uh, two bars. I actually just want this to be a one one bar loop. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding our effects. The effects uh, are dropped into the effects section. So grab an auto filter just to not be original. And let's say we want to control the frequency, we might as well leave this as a, uh, a low pass filter, that's fine. So to control, to create our envelope, we click down here and we click our little E to pop out our envelope section. And we select, we want to create an envelope on the auto filter, and we want to select the uh, frequency, it was already selected there. And I want this to go from where it currently is, and I want it to filter right down. Um, and I'm going to push Command D to duplicate that. I'm actually going to keep this first clip as like a blank, so this will be like our reset for our filter, and the second one here is going to filter down. So that is that is all well and good. So let's um, see what happens now. So we'll launch the clip and now hit our filter. Um, now what's going to happen when it gets to the end here though is it's going to open the filter is going to open back up again. So in order to stop that happening, basically we want to select our dummy clips. I want to turn the, the loop function off. So now it will, uh, it will stay low until it's uh, triggered something else. Now you might have noticed uh, it waited for me to push the, waited for the beginning of the bar before the button that I'd push had an effect on the filter. So in this case, I don't want any kind of quantization happening at all. So I'm going to select both of these clips. And uh, if we hit little L here to open up our launch options, and rather than setting the quantization to global, which is running to this one bar quantization of the project, I'm going to set the quantization to none. So now as soon as I press the button, then we should hear the effect come in. So uh, now we can push it at any time and it comes in and out. So that's all, that's all cool. So now I've got my, uh, my nice low pass filter fade down and uh, I want to complement that. I want to uh, fade back up again. So I push 
selected the clip and I pre pressed Command D. And now I want th this to this filter to start low and then come up high again. So it's not looping, it's just going to sit low past the filter until, until we hit it. And there you have it, that's the, uh, the, how we've used dummy clips in order to create envelopes that we can control. Um, and of course, we can have any audio going on in, this, in our audio channel. We can have another drum loop here. Any audio we have in there, and we have a separate effects track, and we've got our dummy clips. Now, this is all very good and well, but there is um, there's two problems, two problems that we, we could possibly have here. Now, one is we've got to the trouble and we set up these nice effects parameters, and then we've got our let's say we've got a big long set that goes down for pages and pages. We don't want to have to uh, scroll down and scroll all the way back up to get to our to get to our filter pad that we've got set up here. So. Um, and another problem we have is by having a, a, a channel for our, our effects and a channel for our launching is we've now essentially cut the size of our launch grid in half. We've only got four channels because for every channel we've got uh, an effects channel that has to go with that. So the, probably the best way to get around this is to use the user 2 mode. So we'd leave our session mode for, for launching our clips and uh, let's say we add in um, eight channels here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so our all of our effect H FX channels. I won't bother creating them, but we could add another eight FX channels down the side there, uh, and now off the grid. And so to launch the to launch our uh, effects, we'd use the user two mode. So now I want to jump into mini map mode, and let's say f these. I know these effects are for the um, the first channel. So I just go through and uh, manually map all my effects like that. Jump out of MIDI map mode. So now I can jump to, to uh, session mode. I can launch all the clips in my amazingly complex set here. And I can have it rocking out. And uh, there you have it. So there you go, Lampton Worm. I think that should answer your question. I'm pretty sure that's what you were trying to achieve. Now, on to the giveaway. As you're probably aware by now, we are giving away the Loop Masters KJ Saka sample pack. It is an awesome sample pack. If you don't know about it, head down to the dspproject.com slash samples. There's a little video and stuff there that I'll leave up for a while. And uh, if you don't know about it, please do check it out because uh, I'm not just saying it because we're giving it away. It is a genuinely a really cool sample pack. Now, so the winner is, drum roll please, Vera Nova Music. Congratulations, Vera Nova Music. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, I will get in touch with you very shortly and um, the good people at Loot Masters will send you out a physical CD of that pack. Uh, so one last time, thank you very much for Loot Masters for giving us something to give away on the show. And as I also said, I've got another another little giveaway. It's just a just a little thing. The um, the people that distribute Ableton here in the UK have very kindly sent me a bit of swag, and so I've got a uh, a stack of uh, Ableton mouse pads here. Um, so if you are interested in an Ableton mouse pad, um, although to be honest, I don't know who uses m mice pad mice pads mouse pads is this? mouse pads anymore. Um, maybe you might you want to use it for, uh, I don't know, maybe stacking your rack gear up. A little spongy thing in between if you are not lucky enough to own a, a rack to put it in. Or maybe as a oversized ultra cool coaster. Uh, I don't know. So uh, if you want one of these, just send me... Actually, I'll tell you what, if you want one of these, go to the DSP Project Facebook page and tell me what you would do with an Ableton uh, mouse pad 
or if you think uh, Facebook's evil, then um, jump on Twitter if you think that's less <laughs> evil and uh, send just send an at reply to the DSP project and tell me what you would do with your Ableton mousepad and uh, I'll pick a few of you and send them out. So that is probably about it. Um, yeah, congratulations Veronova Music on winning the sample pack. Thank you to Loop Masters for providing it. Um, thank you to you, the viewer, for watching. Uh, if you're not here, maybe you're watching this somewhere else like YouTube, please head down to the dspproject.com uh, and subscribe, that stuff really helps us out. Or feel free to leave a comment under this video if you want to add something to the tutorial. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.